Good day to you. Good to be able to again present another program. If you like this program, I would like for you to share or like or even subscribe. It just help us as we uh, try to uh, basically uh, preach the simplicity of the gospel. I'm going to first of all start all of mine. If you have any questions, please uh, send me a letter, phone, or whatever. Because I believe the gospel of Christ is the most important thing that we have in this world. And I think it's the one of the it is one of the simplest things um, if you hear a gospel lesson from me and you don't think it's simple you can complain send up and say Carter I didn't understand because that's not what I'm trying to do if I cannot get and preach the Word of God in a simple way then I'm pretty ignorant and that's my opinion I think we need to draw near to God. That's what the gospel is all about. Drawing near to God. Amen. As we look at God's word in Psalms, in Psalms there in 73, in verse 28, I'd like to start tonight's or today's lesson with that, which says this, but it is good for me to draw near to God I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Put my, you know, look at this. He said, I have put my trust. Why? For me to draw near to God. We draw near to God. We are putting our trust in them. I, I know if you listen to me, you're putting some trust in me. But the thing about it is, my trust must be in God, and I hope your, your, your trust is in God. Not in what I say, unless you filter it and look at God's Word, because that is what we are to do. Matter of fact, in this lesson, I'm going to show you, I think it's your responsibility. It's your responsibility, everybody's responsibility, to not only draw near to God, but also help others to draw near to God. When we draw near to God, we draw away from ourselves. Do what? <laughs> That's right. I think when we draw near to God, we draw away from ourselves. So oftentimes we can see it's not what we want and, and that gets more people in trouble. Somebody said, I'm tempted, and I've heard people say, well, I'm tempted by that woman, or I'm tempted by my friends, or I'm tempted. The, the one that can tempt you more than anybody else is that one you comb their hair in the morning. We have to realize we need to draw away from ourselves. In Romans, I'd like for you to look in the, in the book of Romans, if you would. In Romans, we will look at Romans chapter 12 verse 3 in Romans 12 verse 3 it says for I say through the grace given to me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think what but to think soberly according to according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. What we are to do, we are not to trust in ourselves more highly. So oftentimes, uh, somebody said, well, every person should do what they think is right. They have to do that. But the thing about it is, we have to make sure our thinking is based upon what God wants us to do. It's no, it's no, revelation from God that people do what they think is right. The pagans in Africa, the cannibals in the Philippines, guess what? They follow their own conscience. They do what they think is right. But the thing about it is, we have to draw away from what we think. 
And I've heard people say, well, go to the religious that most closely follow your thoughts. Don't ever go to religion like that. Preach. Because then it has to be your name instead of God's name in Christ's name. We have to away from ourselves and to follow God. That, there are other verses, but to, to, I'm going to try to keep this a little shorter. A lot of other verses we could use. But also we have to draw away from the world. Notice we have to draw away from the world. In Romans, again, in Romans 12, there in verse 2, I'd like for you to look. Romans 12 and 2. It says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of yours. No, it didn't say that. It says, perfect will of what? Will of God. Away from the world. And we must turn and, and, and do like God. So oftentimes, and I'm... I'm upset. Because so oftentimes, and I see this in our society, and I'm not talking about fads and traditions. We do not have to hold on to traditions of men. I know that. You know, just because I learned how to drive on the right-hand side of the road, if I go to England, I don't have to drive on the right-hand side of the road. I best not. That's a tradition. But the thing about it is, we have to away from the world in the sense the world has drawn us to so oftentimes, sometimes we have accepted things that is, that is wrong. And I'm not talking about hair, men's hair, fussing so much in the 60s about, well, that's a sin to have long hair. Well, how long is that? that that's silly. Have a man's haircut and a woman's haircut. Somebody said, what's the difference? If, well, there's, I don't know any society, in, in, in any society that there's not a difference. If you come to a society, have hair like what? A man. But the thing about it is, if everybody, if I go over to Zimbabwe, and the chief there at one time had 300 wives, many of the men had three or four or five wives, guess what the Bible says? That two shall become what? One. I don't care what that culture is. Follow culture, but when culture disagrees with God's word, then guess what we do? Follow God's word. Away from the world and follow and draw near to God from the, away from the world. And then we have to draw, this is something going to get us, we're going to have to draw near to one another. There's a phrase used by religion and a lot of people that says, well, take God, take Christ as your personal Savior. Well, first of all, I don't agree with that. It's not your personal Savior. One reason I would say that 99.9% .9 of the people was converted to Christ because somebody talked to them. Very few just read the Bible and said, hey, I know. No, they was hit they were by somebody else. We have to draw near to one another. Philippians chapter 1. In the little book of Philippians chapter 1, I'd like for you to look, if you would. Chapter 1 in verse 27. It says, Not only let your conversation be as become the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that ye stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving to, striving by your, no, I keep wanting to say by yourself, but it didn't say that. It says, what, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Striving what? Together. We need to realize, a lot of people, I hope, realize this, we are the family of God. I know in America, a lot of places in the world, we have some dysfunctional families. 
And if you don't say amen to that, I'm ashamed of you. Because I, you know that's the case. Chaplain in prison for five years in the Texas prison system. And I can tell you that 80% of the people that was in there to 85, maybe, they was there because of sin. But the sin that was the root sin to them being there besides a murder and thief and robbery was that sin of a dysfunctional family. And that's killing the family and it's killing the Lord's church. We have to come together as a family, encouraging. And somebody said, now are you preaching on families or are you preaching on the church? Well, first of all, there's no difference. There's no difference, brethren. For too long we think of that. No, the way we act as a family of God and the way we act as a family in our home, if they are not equal, then we are unequal. And we are going to fail in both of them. We need to realize that. We need to near, we need to draw near to one another. And we need to keep God near us. In James chapter 4, I'd like we to look over to James. James chapter 4, there in verse 8. 4 and 8. Draw near to God. <laughs> I think that kind of it goes with this. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. What? You draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart, you double-minded. And the thing about it is, somebody said, draw near to you. But the thing, the thing that we need to realize, somebody said, well, I want God. Hey, God gave his son. But the thing about it is, God did take the first step in that he loved us. God did took the first step. Now we have to make sure that we draw near to God. And then we have to draw near to knowing that we have to be others to consider. That goes along with what I'm basically all that I've said before about the family and the other thing. Else. I want you to look now at Philippians again. Philippians Two, go to Philippians 2, there in verse 14 through 15, this time, 2, 14 through 15. Do all things without what murmuring and disputing, that you may be blameless and, and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. I'm going to go on a little bit and read a little more because it says, Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not ran in vain, neither labored in vain. Notice, among whom you shine as lights in the world. Why? Because of what we are doing. We are others we have others to consider. We need to realize so oftentimes, and I use this illustration, may have used it before, but it one that teaches me something. I, even this week, and a lot of, and ever so often, my six year old granddaughter comes and stays with me. I enjoy it. For usually a day or two, or spring break, maybe three or four days. and. Here, here a while back, she was there and she was in her room and got up that morning and we was getting around and first thing I did was go in and, and I was making my bed, pulling up the sheets and the covers and stuff. And she was at the door looking at me. She had breath, you know, and she looked and said, oh, I gotta make my bed, granddaddy. I didn't say make your bed. She said, I gotta make my bed, granddaddy. She turned in, went in there, and made her own bed. Why? Did I tell her to make the bed? No, I didn't. Did I show her 
Did I show to her what I did in the morning? Yes, and guess what? She followed it. We have others to consider, and we need to realize that. And we need to draw near to God when we draw away from doubts and fear. So oftentimes, we have to have draw away from doubts and fear. There's a little book I can remember. Boy, how about that? I can even remember back to the first, I think it's first, second grade. I believe it was the second. About the little train that could. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. I can still remember the little book. I would turn it and that little train was still going up. I think I can, you turn it again. I think, I think, I think. And then at the end of the page, he was up at the top and he said, what? I know I can, I know I can. I'd like for you to look at Matthew this time. Go to Matthew. We are going to look at Matthew chapter 14 and 29 through 31. Somebody said, what are you talking about? Well, I know this sounds strange, but this is talking about Peter. And Peter was in the boat. We go back to uh, 20, yeah, 28. And Peter answered him and said to the Lord, If thou would, bid me come unto thee in the water. That's when Jesus was walking unto the water. And Peter said, If you bid me. Now, nobody but him said that. He said that. And he said, and Jesus said, well, first of all, Peter asked him and said, Lord, if it be thou. <laughs> I always, you talk about faith. What if it had been somebody else and they'd been lying? <laughs> that's, that's faith, right? If it be thou, he didn't say, that's you. He wasn't sure. But he said, if it, and he told him, he said, to come. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down, when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. You know, how many saw Jesus? Everybody on the boat. But he was the one that said, if be thou, let me walk to you. He, he was the one. He was the first one to follow Jesus. Now, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about physical that day. He was the first one. But it says, but when he saw, but he got out, he walked. But when he saw the wind howling and was afraid and begun to sink, he cried saying, Lord, save me. He was going to the Lord. He was walking, but then he took his eyes off God. He stopped, somebody said, what did he do? He stopped drawing near to God, and he was scared. And it says immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, therefore dost thou doubt. I, I get onto that and I said, wow, thou of little faith. He had enough faith to get out the boat. What do you mean little faith? He had little faith because he didn't keep his eyes on Jesus. Yeah. Brethren, I don't care if you got out of a boat and no matter what happened, I don't care if you was the worst sinner in the world and you said, well, I got out to follow Jesus just because you was baptized, just because you confessed Christ, don't mean you don't keep your eyes on Christ because you can sink. But the thing about it is he got out and did you know, and I'm not getting on to Peter too much because he stretched forth his hand. It doesn't say, now notice this. It says that Jesus stretched forth his hand and he caught him and said unto him, he reached out and caught him, but Peter didn't yank his hand back either. <laughs> and when they had come out into the ship, the wind ceased. But that's not the greatest thing that happened. The greatest thing that happened is in the next verse. Then they that was in the ship came and worshiped him saying, of a truth, 
Thou art the Son of God. Of a truth. They had thought it, but they hadn't made it a truth in their life up to that time. Isn't that something? They thought it. There's many of you that's listening and watching this today that you have thought that in your mind that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. But you haven't really came all the way over. These men, I don't think the greatest thing is Peter walking in the water this day. I don't think even the greatest thing is Jesus walking on the water. I think the greatest thing on that day was that ship of load of people that came finally and said this. It says, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Have you came to that truth? If so, you need to act upon it. Because that's what it is. These men, every one of them, but one, died a violent death. Every one but one, according to legend and history. But I do know this, every one but one, and that's Judas, is now at the right hand of the throne of God Amen. in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Are you drawing near to God? Follow these. I didn't go into detail. I wish I had more time, but I wanted to give you this outline. And I pray that you would study if I can help you, I ask you to call upon me. But the greatest help you will find is in this book and the message therein. God be with you till we meet again.